All right, Shalom, 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 Shalom. All praises. Uh, first and foremost, we're going to give all praises, glory, and honor um, to Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. All right, this is uh, Brother Raham from Yahweh's camp in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, just, you know, coming at you with some stuff that I want to kind of, you know, bring out through the spirit of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Um, and hopefully this can edify a lot of our people. Um, just wanted to kind of go and move in the spirit, um, you know, and, and talk about repentance, man, and, and true repentance, what it means to truly repent, um, what are we repenting from, right? And, um, you know, just some uh, misconceptions on, on what repentance is, uh, who, who has the ability to repent, and, um, you know, the process of repentance, uh, you know, a lot of times in the Christian church, um, you know, they just tell you just to ask God to forgive you of your sins that you've committed and all is forgiven, all is well. The problem is um, the church never tells you uh, what sin is, first of all, right? The church never tells you what repentance looks like. Um, and, and the church never tells you, uh, you know, there's a process to repentance, right? You just don't say it and they just go about your day. It has to be a, 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 a sense of actions that, that follows after you confess, first of all, the transgression of the law that you've broken, and then, um, and then uh, you have to, you know, prove the Most High, well, the Most High has to prove you on, um, you know, moving forward, if you truly repented or not, all right? A lot of times we come into this idea that we could just say that we're sorry, and then that's it. There's, there's nothing that needs to be done after that, right? So real quick, I want to get the definition of sin because we understand that, um, you know, we repent from breaking God's laws. We repent from the transgression. The problem is, like I said, our people don't know what they're repenting from. So through the spirit of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, right, I want to, uh, first of all, acknowledge what sin is, right, and then acknowledge um, the rest of the scriptures moving forward. All right, so just bear with me. All right, this is First John 3 and 4. It says, Whosoever, whosoever commit of sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. All right, so that's what sin is. Biblically speaking, you transgress God's laws. All right, so some of the laws that we understand, no pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster, right no adultery right no no spiritual fornication all right uh uh you got to keep the feast days right you got to keep the high holy days you got to keep the sabbath okay you gotta um every, i mean christ said not one jot oh until it shall no wise pop, uh, part from the law till all be fulfilled matter of fact let's get that right let's get that real quick matthew uh five right matthew five all right, it says, think not, Matthew 5 and 17. Yahweh Shai's words, right? Who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. He says in Matthew 5 and 17, think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. So all the prophecies that the prophets have spoken, that Christ has not come to destroy these things. Christ has not come to destroy the law. Your pastor would tell you the law is done away with, but Christ says otherwise. Christ says, think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets, meaning the prophecies, right? I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. That word fulfill means to do, means to uh, uh, act on, right? Um, so it says in verse 18, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. All has not been fulfilled yet, all right? Christ still has to come back and redeem the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Christ still has to come and smite the nations that oppose him, right? Christ still has to set up his kingdom. So all is not fulfilled, okay? Verse 19, whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So even wearing your beard, that's a least commandment, meaning it's easy for us to keep these commandments. It's easy for us to keep the law of wearing our beard if you're a man. It's easy for us to only worship one God, right? It's easy for us to not commit spiritual fornication, right? That's the least of the commandments, right? There's no law 
that, uh, well, let me just preference my statement by saying um, the law can be can, can be fulfilled. You have to first understand the law first to understand what can't be fulfilled and what can be. Now, if there's no temple around, of course, we're not able to do animal sacrifices, right? Because there's no temple around, we can't uh, 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 do the animal sacrifice of purification. A woman is, for example, a woman is completing her cycle, her flower. Um, she's supposed to get the purification offering completed, right? Um, but because we do not have a temple and we're not in the land, certain things we're not able to uh, uh, complete. However, we can still keep the commandments. We can still keep the laws. We can still keep the feast day. We can still keep the high holy day. If you're a farmer, you can still keep the laws when it comes to agriculture, right? Um, so it says in verse 19, Matthew 5 and 19, Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So it's our job to not only teach the commandments, but teach men and women uh, how to um, repent and uh, to keep the commandment. All right. So let's get Ezekiel 14 and 6. All right. Let's just jump right into it. This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 6. It says, therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith, thus saith Yahweh. God, right? Lord God, the Lord God, right? Repent and turn yourselves from your idols. So Ezekiel is telling the children of Israel that you are committing a crime, right? By worshiping other gods. As a matter of fact, the number one commandment or the first commandment is to know that there is a God, right? And then following that is to worship the Most High Yahweh, right? And to not worship other gods, right? I want to get that. I want to get that in Exodus, right? It's not in my notes, but I want to prove that, right? Exodus 20, um, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That is one of the first commandments. Do not have another god. So, so if the law is done away with, the number one law or the number one uh, uh, commandment is to not have other gods, right? So what we're saying is, um, and what I'm saying through the Spirit and what the Scripture is saying is... Um, to know that the Most High exists and to keep the Most High's commandments and to know that there is only one God, right? Real name is Yahweh, right? It says, and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations, right? So your idols are abominations when you worship other gods, when you put the Messiah on the same level as the Most High God, you are worshiping an idol un unknowingly, right? Unfortunately, our Christian church uh, is teaching that Christ is the same as the Most High, giving you another God, right? Giving you someone on the same level as Yahweh, right? And and even Yahweh Shai himself does not condone worshiping him as the Father, right? So let me get verse 7. For every one of the house of Israel or of the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me and setteth up his idols, in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me. I, the most high, Yahweh, will answer him by myself. OK, so so we have to repent from putting other things in front of our God. Right. So what, that, what does that mean? When you wake up, are you on your Facebook? Right. It's, you know, this is a question to ask yourself when you wake up. Are you on your Instagram? Are you checking your text messages? Are you missing your missed calls? Or, or are you thanking the Most High for another day to get it right? Right? Are you, are you thanking the Most High for uh, uh, waking you up and allowing you to be alive? We just came through a so-called new year. It's 2022, right? So Esau's calendar is telling us that there is a new year, right? And I was just going into this where... On New Year's Eve, there's a proverbial death angel that's lurking, right? That's out looking to kill people, man, right? Uh, uh, because our people, mostly our people, right? I know there's other nations that celebrate the, the quote-unquote New Year, but our people have a, uh, a, a, a an affinity of cleaving to the other nations, 
to being like the other nations, right? To being like the so-called white man, being like the so-called Arab, being like the so-called uh, uh, East Indian, the Chinese, the Japanese, right? We never want to come back to our culture. And it's not our people's fault because we never grew up with the culture, right? So I don't want to digress, but the idea that, um, you know, we, we, we wake up and we are uh, actually, uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? We are nonchalant. We are ignorant to the idea that we have to keep the commandments and we have to thank God every day. Um, it goes over our head, right? It literally goes over our head. And we have this mindset that somehow God works for us, right? And that uh, we're supposed to wake up alive, right? We're supposed to wake up um, uh, uh, here to do what we want to do to do what our hearts desire. And we can sin willfully and break God's commandments willfully and then pray for a blessing. And when that blessing comes, you know, sometimes our people will give God the credit, right? But sometimes, you know, it doesn't work like that. We never really pray to God unless we're in trouble, right? Now, when you come into this truth, you understand that every day is a gift from the Most High, right? You should have been dead a long time ago. When you come in this truth, the fear of the Most High the fear of the most high, the fear of life and death literally uh, enters into your system and your mindset into your spirit where you thank the most high for uh, um, giving you another day to get things right. And this is why as in the Hebrew Israelite community um, and in this truth, in this walk, you never take a day for granted, right? It keeps you humble. It keeps you safe, all right? And, and the most high sees all that, right? This is Sirach 23 and 19. The Most High sees everything. The Most High wakes up and says, you know, I mean, the Most High wakes you up and says, is Ra'am, right? I'll just use myself for example. Is Taziar Ra'am, right? Officer 50, is he going to wake up and, and thank the Most High that he's alive? Or is he just going to wake up, you know, use the bathroom, you know, walk through the house, make some food, turn TV on, you know, roll up. You know how he used to do when he was in the world, right? So this is Sirach 23 and 19. Such a man only feareth the eyes of men and knoweth not that the eyes of the Lord, the eyes of Yahweh, are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, right? Meaning he sees everything, right? 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men. So all the ways of men, everything that you're doing, the Most High sees that, right? So yeah, the Most High knows your heart, but he knows your heart is wicked. He knows your heart is deceitful. He knows that your heart does not want the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, right? Um, so yeah, when we're out there teaching and, and on the streets, on the highways and byways, and you know, someone says, God knows my heart. Yeah, he knows it's wicked. He knows it's deceitful, right? His eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, beholding all the ways of men and considering the most secret parts. So your most secret parts, the things that you um, that you uh, 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 try to abstain from everybody else knowing, the Most High knows that. He knows if you're going to have to if you if you have sin, and you um, have the desire to sin. A lot of times, I'm just going to pick on the church again, man. All right, the pastor, the sister, the 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 brother, the deacon, whoever has it in their mind when I get out of church. I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, A, B, and C, right? The Most High sees that. He understands what you're doing and, and how you wish to do evil, right? This is Hebrews 4 and 13. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked, all things being exposed, all things being revealed, all things being naked, right? And open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do, right? So the Most High sees all that. So you have to, before you understand repentance, you must know that God knows if this repentance is sincere or not, right? If you go back, I've done lessons on being chastened by the Most High. If you go back, you'll see that uh, the Most High chastens those that he loves. For you to be chastened, it should be a wake-up call on, on how to keep the commandments properly and to come back to the Lord and to put the fear of God in you right the fear of god is in you if you are um if you endure chastisement right if you endure chastening 
And that's like almost like that second to last warning shot the Most High gives you, right? You kind of want to get this before you get chastened, right? You want to repent before you get chastened. Because if the Most High chastens you, sometimes, uh, you know, it might not be, um, uh, uh, it, it just helps if you just get it right the first time, right? If you see, I'm, I'm healing up, but I got my chastisement this summer, man. I got marks here on my face, you can barely see. And through the Spirit of the Most High, man, I got marks on my arms and on my legs um, from suffering an accident. And that was my chastisement. So what did that make me do? That made me repent, examine myself, and then clean up some ways that I was uh, lacking, right? This is Isaiah, uh, Salaki. This is Jeremiah 51, verse 6. It says, My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. Verse 7, All that found them have devoured them, and their adversary said, We offend not, because they have sinned against Yahweh. The habitation of justice, even the Most High, the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as the he goats before the flocks, right? So it's telling you to become leaders, right? The he goats of the flocks were the leaders, right? The male sheep, the male goats were leaders. They were path, uh, they were, uh, uh, um, um, trailblazers right they 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 they've actually made a path for the other herd to follow right whether you talk about any livestock animal any herding animal the male led the males the big males the big bulls or the big sheep or whoever right the one in leadership now in a uh, uh, a humanistic mindset now you have the teachers of this word they are also coming out of babylon coming out of the ideas of babylon coming out of the mindset of Babylon and going into, um, back into this, this, this word. But you have to lead first, right? So it says in verse eight, remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans, which is the Babylonians, right? And be as the he goats before the flocks, right? Meaning to lead the people out of bondage, out of Babylon, out of this mindset, that we are like them, when in all actuality, we are above the other nations. So for us to lead, right, the other nations and how to properly serve the Most High, you got to come back to the law. I can't lead you if I'm trying to be like you. I'm going to say that again. I can't lead you if I'm trying to be like you. Right? It's going to take a lot of leadership. It's going to take a lot of male uh, uh, uh patrilineal or not patrilineal but a uh, uh, male leadership right patriarchy that's the word i'm looking for it's going to be a lead a lot of patriarchy for us to come up out of this this is why it says the scripture says the men shall lead right roughly paraphrasing so it starts with your house men right teach your household how to repent teach your household how to come back to the laws of god you yourself can't be hypocritical hypocritical Right, you yourself have to keep the Most High's commandments and teach people how to teach the, how to keep the commandments. Right, so so again, it says, "Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans," meaning to what? Go back and 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 actually come to the law, statutes, and commandments. And actually, that was uh, that was a good precept. That was Jeremiah fifty and six through eight, right? Um, but Salakia, I actually wanted Jeremiah 51 and 6. But it says the same thing. You see how the Most High works. I actually got a new precept or a new scripture, supporting scripture, that goes to what I really wanted, right? Now, this actual scripture goes back or goes forward, goes forward to Revelation 18, 3 through 6. But this is Jeremiah 51, verse 6. It says, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will redeem, or shall I, he will redender, shall I, shall I, he will render unto her a recompense. Right? So again, come out of Babylon. Now, uh, 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 America is Babylon, right? America is spiritual Babylon, spiritual Sodom, spiritual Gomorrah, 
spiritual Egypt, right? Uh, verse 7, this is Jeremiah 51 and 7. Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad, meaning they're crazy. They are off, right? Even, look, <clears throat> in America, a, an East Indian, one of the oldest nations that kept their laws, statutes, and commandments and their custom. An East Indian can come from Bangladesh or Sri Lanka or whatever, right? Come to America and forget his old customs, right? An Iraq citizen, an Iranian, a Saudi Arabian can leave their homeland, right? Come to America and not have to follow their laws, but they can then, they can then drink the cup of Babylon, meaning they can be a homosexual, meaning they can convert their religion to Christianity or Islam, right? Meaning they can um, become an atheist, right? They can do whatever they want. That is what it means to drink the golden cup of Babylon, right? But it says, Babylon have been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunken. Right, I mean they're drunken off the fornication and the the the, the spirituality of um, of Babylon, right? Of Esau's rules, right? The nations have drunken of her wine; therefore, the nations are mad. Verse eight: Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm of her pain. If so, be she may be healed. All right. So again, what is this telling us? This is telling us to come out of Babylon. This is part of repentance. This is the beginning of repentance. You have to first identify you are living in a sinful lifestyle, right? Once you understand that you are living in a sinful lifestyle, this is part of self-examination. You have to leave all the, 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 the fun you had in Babylon, all the wicked, perverse fun that you had in Babylon, right? Even so much as something as eating pork, right? Babylon says you can eat pork. And they'll try to they'll try to justify it in this book, right? They'll use scriptures and say, now we can eat pork. The Bible doesn't say you can eat pork, right? So you have to come up out of the 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 uh the, the false doctrine of Babylon, which America perpetuates, all right. How do you do that? You got to first identify what you're doing. You have to repent and then you have to uh, ask the most high for, for grace and mercy, right? I want to get this gift real quick in Romans 5 and 15, all right? Because historically speaking, if I'm an Hebrew Israelite, right? If I'm, a, if I'm an Israelite and I miss a Passover, according to the law, I'm cut off from my people, right? If I am a Hebrew Israelite and... Let's just say, you know, I committed uh, fornication or spiritual, not spiritual fornication, but literal fornication, right? Or adultery with my neighbor's wife. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Bear with me. All right, Salaki, Salaki, y'all. All right, so if I am, um, you know, uh, like I said, where I left off was if I am uh, into wickedness, into perversion, right, into uh, certain acts, I'm either cut off from my nation, right, and I have to be cast away, all right? I'm cast away or I'm put to death. You really, you know, some certain laws you have to re, re, repay, you know, uh, money with interest, right? If I stole something, I return it with interest, right? Certain things, you know, I can come back around. Certain laws, you were put to death or you were cast away, right? If I if I broke the Sabbath, I was put to death, right? And these are and we have facts to back this up, right? But 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 and I've missed. Plenty of Passovers since before I came in this truth, right? I've probably, um, you know, done some wicked acts that 
would have caused me to be put to death, right? But because of grace through Christ, I'm able to then, then I'm able to repent and then come back. Watch this. Romans 5 and 15. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. The free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead. So if I commit a, uh, uh, um, a sin worth uh, uh, that, that, that the, the ordinance was death, right? That was it. I was put to death, right? It says, for if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God. And the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, hath abounded unto many. Right? Meaning, meaning, now, if I understand, because remember, some of, some of Paul's letters were to those that did not know. And so they just kind of stayed in this Greek mindset. They were Israelites that stayed in a Greek mindset. And they, and because they grew up in that Greek mindset, they grew up as Greek citizens. They grew up as Hellenized Jews, right? Same thing, no different than 2021, 2022, right? We wake up Israelites all the time. Um, you know, centuries ago, a millennium or two or three ago, we really couldn't teach this gift of, of grace because you were cut off, you were put to death, you couldn't come back around. But you have to thank the Most High that he allowed his son to die on the cross as an atonement for you to come back into the fold of the sheep of Israel. Now you can grow your beard and properly serve the Most High. Right now you can put your fringes on and feel good about it. Right. Because you have that gift of grace. That's the free gift. Right. Um, so let me read that again. Romans 5 and 15. But not as the offense. So also is the free gift. For if through, through the offense of one, many be dead. You a friend, you know, one of these laws that were, uh, uh, the ordinance was death, right? A lot of people died. A lot of people should be dead, right? I should be dead. The Most High should have took me out years ago, right? Again, but I didn't know I was who I was as a child of the Most High. I didn't know that I was an Israelite, right? I grew up in Christian doctrine, and we got done celebrating Easter or Christmas and had a big ham, right? I should have been dead um, practicing a uh, 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 false doctrine, practicing a, a wicked act, right? It says, for through the offense of one, many be dead. Much more the grace of God, the grace of Yahweh. He gives you grace, right? And the gift by grace, which is by one man, so by Christ, Yahweh Shai Mashiach hath abounded unto many, right? Verse 16, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. Your judgment was to be condemned, right? But the free gift of many offenses unto justification. So that gift gives you justification to come back to the 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 commonwealth of Israel come back to the nation of Israel, which allows you to properly serve the Most High without being under this um, mindset that you are, uh, uh, that you can't come back around. All right. I hope that made sense. I hope that made sense. If not, um, you know, make a message in the, uh, um, and, and we can go into it. Right. So let's go back into this, right. Let's get into it. So what is, what is Repentance. Right? What is repentance? Acts 3 and 19. <clears throat> right? Acts 3 and 19. Repentance. Repentance. Again, our Christian family, right? God bless them. But their doctrine tells you that you can repent. You can get baptized. You, you, you go into water. Right? You're being washed. You come up. And then you're going right back into the world. You light that cigarette up again. You go under, you come up, you know, you right back at the neighbor's house trying to, you know, lay with his wife, right? You go down, you come up, or you go to church and you repent and you at the pool pit doing the benediction with the pastor, 
You're doing all these things, but then you're going right back and you're shooting up heroin or you back to the alcohol or you back to the drugs, right? That's not true repentance. Here's Acts 3 and 19. It says, repent ye therefore, repent ye therefore, and be converted. So repent and then be converted. Converted where? Converted back to the law, right? Because it says, verse, look, let me read it again. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. We started off this lesson by giving you the biblical definition of sin, which is the transgression of the law. So if, if you're going to be converted, you got to be converted to something, right? They have something called uh, uh, exchange conversion or salakia, uh, a currency conversion, right? Currency conversion. I'm converting pesos to the American dollar. I'm converting to something or from something. There's going to be two variables in conversion. When it comes to these scriptures, you convert from sin to righteousness, from being a lawbreaker to a law follower, right? So it says, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. So now we can't hold you accountable for sin if you truly convert it. Salakia, 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 Salakia. All right. I'm coming out of this cold, right? So through the spirit, man, bear with me. All right. It says that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, right? And that refreshing is you actually being able to call yourself a child of God and to properly worship the Most High. All right. So I'm going to read that again. All right. Let's make it smooth, right? We're going to make it smooth. All right, Acts 3 and 19, it says, Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. All right, so, so again, what does that mean? That means to repent and to come back to the laws of God. This Bible tells you this book is about the laws of God, right? I believe Baruch 4 and 4 said, or Baruch 4 and 1 says, well, let's just get it, right? Let's get Baruch 4 and 1. This whole book is about the commandments of God, right? This is Baruch 4 and 1. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law that endureth forever. All they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. You see what I'm saying? So the book of the commandments that endures forever, if you leave it, you I mean, if you come to it, you're going to live. If you leave it, you will die, right? This is why uh, Deuteronomy 30, all right? Deuteronomy 30 and 15, it says, See, I have set before you this day life and good and death and evil, all right? Life and good and death and evil. So the death is breaking the commandments. The life is keeping the commandments, keeping the laws. If the wages of sin, going to Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, right? So we understand the wages of sin being death, and we understand that the keeping the commandments is life, all right? This is very clear, all right? When they teach you to break God's commandments, they're teaching you, all right? They're teaching you the ways of death, all right? When they're telling you how to keep the commandments, which is what we teach, all we do is we teach life. Now, you may, now our teaching style has been controversial right um but at the same time um what we're saying is the actual truth you may not like our delivery right um but through the spirit man people get it all right all right now let's go to proverbs 1 and 22 all right proverbs chapter 1 verse 22 all right um all right, this is Proverbs 1 and 22. It says, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. 
All right, if you know what if you know what knowledge is, it's keeping the commandments. All right. Verse 23, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. All right, verse 25. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and with none of you my reproof. And with none of my reproof, right? So the Most High is giving you uh, uh, an option to come back, right? To come back. Don't be simple-minded, right? Search the Most High. Search the, uh, uh, the commandments. Uh, and, but y'all hate knowledge, right? That's what he's saying. Our people hate knowledge. And it's very evident. We out there teaching. I've been, I've been teaching for a little over a year. And I've been in this truth for about going on three years uh, this March. All right? All praises to the Most High for keeping me in this thing, right? But I see it all the time where our people just walk up and down the street, half dressed, uh, uh, with all kind of sicknesses and disease and, and plagues surrounding them, right? And then as a result, you know, they hate the knowledge. They hate the words that we're given on the highways and byways. And just me personally, I believe people reject the knowledge because it's easy to live in your sin, right? It's easy to live in sin. Nothing, nothing worth a damn um, is not gained by work. Right? Nothing, I don't care if you're talking about uh, a relationship. I'm not, I don't care if you're talking about uh, becoming a celebrity. Right? Anybody that has anything that's worth a damn, you have to work to get it. Right? It's only a few scenarios where you just inherit uh, 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 a beautiful lifestyle, something that's valuable. Right? Um, and even still, you got to work to maintain it. So anything that you get that's worth the damn has to be earned, right? Has to work for. It. But our people do not want to work for things. Our people do not want to work for anything. They'd rather be lazy and stay in their current status, right? As opposed to working hard for something that's worth the damn, all right? So again, um, that's it on that, right? Verse 25, it says, but ye have set at not all my counsel and with none of my reproof, right? And that counsel goes back to the law because the law is our counsel, right? That's our advice. That's our instruction. That's our way of living. That's our culture, all right? So let's get Psalm 25 and 4, all right? Let's get Psalm 25, verse 4. All praises, man, all praises. All praise to the Most High, man. The Most High actually put the spirit on brothers to get this information and spew it out to our people, right? Psalm 25 and 4, it says, Show me thy ways, O Yahweh. Teach me thy paths. Lead me in thy truth, right? What's the truth? Psalm 119, 142 says the law is the truth, right? Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. So it says in verse 5, lead me in thy truth, or lead me in the commandments, right? And teach me, for thou art the power of my salvation, or the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all the day. Remember, O Yahweh, thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. All right. Verse, that, verse 7, remember not the sins of my youth nor my transgressions, but 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 first, before King David, right? Because King David wrote Psalm 25. Before King David even asked for the Most High to not remember the sins of his youth, he's asking for forgiveness. And he's asking to be led in the law, right? Anytime you go into the Psalms, you're looking at King David with, uh, and this is a king after God's own heart. So if King David had to be humble and if King David had to have this mindset of repentance and asking for forgiveness and fervent fear of the Most High, we also, it's, it's wise, right, to have this same mindset, right? It says, remember, verse 7, remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, which is what? Breaking the commandments, right? So King David first asked to show him 
how to keep the commandments, right? To lead him in the truth, right? Then he asks that his sins be not forgive, um, be not remembered, right? And to be forgiven, right? So it says, verse 7 again, Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness' sake, O Yahweh. Right? So you're looking at the actual process of repentance, right? Through the spirit of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah. You just don't say it and say, I repentant, right? And I've done uh, righteous in the ways of God. And then you know tomorrow you about to go do some uh, wicked acts, right? Hey, real quick, just on a side note, <clears throat> we were out there Saturday, Friday night, right? Friday night, we had this, you know, unity camp, and we had this uh, 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 camp, uh, 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 multiple men from different camps came out and supported. And we're out there um, on Glenwood Avenue in Raleigh. And I, I, I was talking to this brother, right, who was humble, humble, uh, humble enough to tell me, hey, look, I don't know everything I'm trying to learn. So, you know, we kind of go through the idea of him being a Hebrew Israelite. Um, he called himself a Christian, but he rejected Christianity, right? And so, you know, we kind of entertained it. Of course, after talking to him for some time, we realized he's into Christianity. He just doesn't know it, right? Everything about his doctrine screamed Christianity. But, but, you know, the, the, the idea that, um, you know, he was out on the streets on New Year's Eve and he wasn't teaching the gospel. Um, he actually, you know, after talking to him, we had to kind of peel the layers back and, and break this dude's hard shell of being stubborn. Just talking to him, you know, he actually admitted <laughs> that he shouldn't have been out there on New Year's Eve going to the club and drinking, right? Um, you know, and, and <clears throat> so it just kind of showed me that the Christian church really had no fear of the Most High. They have no fear of the Most High. And this brother, which is a product of the Christian church, you know, he had no fear of the Most High, right? So... So what did that, and I have to tell him, I have to bring out the scripture, Hebrews 10, 26, because he admitted to willful sin, right? And I, I want to get that real quick, right? Hebrews 10, 26, right? It says, for if we sin willfully, after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth, right? Which is the law, statutes, and commandments, Psalm 119, 142, right? It says, for if we sin willfully, Hebrews 10, 26, after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, right? So I told the brother, I said, look, brother, you are actually um, willfully sinning, willfully breaking God's commandments. Um, you are actually putting your salvation in danger because even though, even though you don't know the, the law, statutes, and commandments, and you're not in the truth, your mindset is telling you in the truth, and in your mindset, you're willfully sinning. The brother had to deal with it as a result. Uh, hopefully, you know, we get the brother to come around. Um, but, you know, just exposing our people, man, they actually believe that they can do what they want. And there is no recompense that's going to follow. Scripture says if you sin willfully, um, after you learn the truth, uh, you know, hey, you're, you're uh, subjecting yourselves to not having a sacrifice, all right? Uh, I didn't want to digress too far, but hopefully uh, we get it, right? We get the idea that, um, you know, you, you, have, you have to understand um, what the commandments are to, to really be in the truth of the Bible, all right? That's the moral compass, which is the law, right? Your moral compass, your base level on understanding if you're doing it right or wrong, goes to the law, right? The law is our compass. The law is our our uh, our marker, our spiritual marker, all right? So, so what does that mean, right? What do you do, right, if you don't know the commandments should be kept, right? Do you stay in sin? No, right? <laughs> do you stay breaking the commandment? No, 
right? You have to convert yourselves, right? We just established that in Acts 3 and 19. You have to convert yourselves and then, and then come back to the law, right? You're converting yourself from pesos to the American dollar, right? So, so how does Christ or how does the Most High look at you? Well, I want to bring this out. All right, how does if you if you're ignorant to these commandments, if you're ignorant to the laws being kept, fear not, okay, fear not. The Most High gives us grace, right? The Most High winks at our sins, right? And I want to bring this out. This is Rome, uh, Salakia, Acts seventeen and thirty, and the times of this ignorance. Right? Meaning you're ignorant to the law. You're ignorant to being, you're an Israelite. You're ignorant to keeping the Passover. You're ignorant to uh, uh, keeping the feast days. You got pork in your fridge. Right? You got shrimp in your fridge. You have the grace. Right? And this is a second witness on how the Most High looks at it. And the times of his ignorance, Yahweh winked at. But now, right? The Most High winked at it. Meaning he's like, all right, she didn't know. She didn't know to, that, that being a hoe was, was off, right? He didn't know that sleeping with the next man's wife was off, right? It says, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Let me read that again. Acts 17 and 30. And the times of his ignorance, Yahweh winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. So the Most High commanded us to repent, even though we were ignorant. He let it slide, right? Some folks didn't get that. Some folks, the Most High just took their life right there, right, for what they've done, right? This is why you have to be thankful that you're still alive, that you're still here, all right? Because the Most High um, winked at uh, 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 those sins, but he's commanding you to repent. And then to be converted, to come back to the law, statutes, and commandments. This is how important the law is, right? This is how important it is. All right? Now, being justified by the law only, that's a different subject, right? We understand you have to have the works and the faith together, right? You have to have the works and the faith together. But, but you must keep the commandments of God, right? This is Job 13 and 23 is that what i want job 13 23 yeah it says how many are my iniquities and sins how many are my iniquities and sins meaning how many commandments did i break how many transgressions have i have i uh, uh applied how many offenses have i applied right it says make me to know my transgressions and my sins you want the most high to reveal you Reveal to you your transgressions and your sins. You want the Most High to show you these things, right? I say it all the time. If you um, are, in, okay, let's just go back to school, right? If you were in school, right? Going back to, you know, you being in class, you being in school. Um, when you broke the, when, when, not broke the commandments. When you took a test, your teacher gave you a grade, right? If you got a bad grade, right? Your teacher, let's just say you got a C, all right? Let's just say you got a C on a math test, right? Algebra, right? So your teacher cho chose you the next day after she grades your work, she shows you where you went off at with a red pen. You know, uh, 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 whatever the equation was, you got it wrong. Here it is, right? These are quizzes, these are tests, then you have the exam. If you paid attention to uh, uh, the, the teacher's corrections, you knew how to answer the correct way when the exam came, right? Which is the big test, right? You had the, 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 the midterms, then you had the final, things like that, right? So the Most High is giving you tests. He's showing you by going off with this word, right? So when you break the commandments willfully, the Most High is telling you, listen, you broke the commandment here, next time do it here. Now, the people that teach on the corners and on the streets and on the highways and byways and teach this law in sincerity and truth, we are the red pen. We are the red ink that marks where you're going off at. 
So instead of uh, 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 laughing at us, mocking us, scorning us on the streets, ask us, ask us. Look, I went off. Where did I go off at? Show me book, chapter, verse where I went off. And we'll be more than happy to show you, right? Job 13, 23 says, How many are mine iniquities and sins? Make me to know my transgressions and my sins, right? Let it be known to me. Reveal to me where I'm going off, right? If your teacher, going back to the math quiz parable, right? If your teacher knew that your answer was wrong and gave you the correct grade anyway, when the final came, you're going to fail because what? You never had the correct guidance. You never had the correct way of making known your, uh, your mistakes. Show me my mistakes so then when the final comes, I can then answer correctly and pass the test, right? This is why Isaiah 58 and one says, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions. Let's read it, right? Isaiah 58 and 1. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions. Meaning, to, to become that red pen, become that, that marker showing, yes, you got the answer correctly. No, you did not get the answer correctly. You got this right, you got that wrong. Here's how you do it. Okay, here's how you do it. And then when the next test comes, you'll know, right? So we're telling you how to live life. So when the test comes, you'll know, right? And the house of Jacob, their sins. So we actually show people where they're going off, right? We show people how to be corrected. But y'all, not anybody here, but our people, unfortunately, despise chastisement. It's like they despise correction, all right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, you know, wrap this up soon, right? So let's get to Syrac 17. Syrac chapter 17, verse 24. All right, the book of Ecclesiasticus, right? And your apocrypha. All right, Syrac 17, 24 says, But unto them that repent, he granted them return and comforted those that fell in patience. All right, so the ones that repent, that understand, look, I broke the commandments. Now you have that, that, that patience. Now you can return, but you have to repent. You have to come back to the laws of God, right? It, verse 25 proves it. It says, return unto the Lord and forsake thy sin. So return to the most high by forsaking your transgressions, by, by forsaking the sins being broken, right? And it says, and make, it says, Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. So you have to pray to the Most High, right? And offend less. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity, for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light. What is the darkness? Proverbs 4 and 19 tells you that the, the well, let's just bring it out real quick. Proverbs 4 and 19, right? Scripture says to prove all things. So don't take my word for it. Salakia, so like Proverbs, yeah, Proverbs 4 and 19. Proverbs 4 and 19. It says, the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. So the wickedness, which is the break, the commandments being broken, is darkness, right? Now, Proverbs 6, 23 gives you the light. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. So the definition of the light is the law. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life, right? So me showing you the way of life, that's what that is, right? So it says, uh, Syrac 17, 26, I'm gonna read it again. Now that we know light and darkness, it says, turn again to the most high and turn away from iniquity, right? So turn away from sin. And how do you do that? By repenting. For he will lead thee out of darkness into the light. He's going to lead you out of not knowing the commandments or the law into learning the commandments and the law, right? Of health and hate thou abomination vehemently. Who shall praise the most high in the grave? How can you praise Yahweh or how can you praise the most high? How can you keep the commandments if you're dead, 
right? Instead of them which live and give thanks, all right? So that's where we're at right there, right? So what does that mean? What does that mean? So I'm gonna go into a few prayers, right? That you can go into every day to keep you um, uh, on the mindset of uh, repentance and and because we, we're supposed to repent daily. You repent daily, right? And how do you repent daily? Well, here's a, some here's some precepts or some scriptures that you can write down to keep you um, in the mindset of repentance. All right. <clears throat> here's how you stay and, and and write these down. All right, Psalm one, uh, Psalm nineteen and verse twelve. It says, "Who can understand his errors or his sins?" Right. Cleanse thou me from secret faults. So cleanse me from things that I've done unknowingly, right? 13, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright. Meaning, sins that I've done presumptuously, right? Sins that I've committed unknowingly, right? I didn't know, I didn't know that when I came in this truth, you don't know all 613 plus laws. You have to learn them. Right? But at first you don't know. You know about the French, you know about the beard, you know about no pork, shrimp, crab, or lobster, right? But there's other laws, right? You should have a shovel, right? That's a law, right? Uh, 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 wearing 100% fabrics is a law that people do not know that they must learn, right? So you may be in this truth and you may not have that shovel, you may not, you may have the mixed fabrics, right? You gotta understand and read these things. Scripture says, blessed is he that readeth. So when you read these things, you understand, okay, let me go ahead and do this. Okay, oh, that's a law. Okay, cool, let me do that, right? So it says, keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Let them not rule over me, right? Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Now I'm innocent because I've searched the commandments and I searched the laws, statutes, and commandments, right? And I searched the feast days and the high holy days, and I searched no interracial marriages. I searched uh, uh, um, uh, how to keep the, the commandments, how to keep the Sabbath, how to keep the new moon, how to keep the feast days, right? Verse 14, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, right? O Yahweh, my strength and my redeemer, so for you to first be accepted, remember, and if you look at David's letters, you never see David ask for acceptance and then ask for repentance or ask for a cleansing, right? It don't work like that. Before I can ask the Most High to accept me and to accept my cleansing, I first, first, I have to repent first. I first have to be converted. First, I have to Acknowledge my sins and my transgressions. Got another, I got another precept, another witness to substantiate what I'm trying to tell you, right? A lot of times our people repent unknowingly and then they go back into the world. A lot of times our people uh, 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 ask for the blessing and then ask for repentance later, right? Or they say they're going to repent later, never get around to it, but they want that blessing, right? You can't get the blessing unless you repent first. This is Psalm 51 and 9. This is a classic. It says, Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O Yahweh, and renew a, re a right spirit within me. So David is asking for forgiveness. He's asking that his sins be forgiven and blotted out. Right? Then he's, then he's asking for a clean heart. Right? This is repentance right here. And renew a right spirit, a right, not an evil spirit, not a, not a regular spirit, not any old spirit, but a renew, a right spirit within me, right? What is the, what is the, the, the moral compass of this right spirit? The law, right? Verse 11, cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me, restore right? Restore, meaning to bring back, right? Restore, uh, meaning I once had it and then I need to have it back again, right? Restore unto me 
the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then, only then, will I teach transgressors thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. All right? So, of course, for this thing to happen, you have to first be uh, 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 concise and contrite and, and um, uh, uh, sincere in you knowing that you broke the commandments of God. All right? Then you ask for the blessing of coming back into the fold. Then you ask to teach others. And then, then, only then, will the Most High will look to give you uh, uh, the blessings that you feel you deserve. A lot of times our people hustle backwards. They ask for forgiveness. They ask uh, uh, for uh, um, a, uh, um, a contrite heart and they're sincere after they get the blessing, right? Our people sometimes have this mindset of a pimping mentality. I'll give you this if you give me what I want first, right? That's not the way it works. We work for the most high. Con. All right, 2 Ezra 9 and 15. It says, I have said before and now do speak and will speak it also hereafter that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. Okay, so, so again, what is that saying? A lot of people are going to die. A lot of people are going to die, right? And I'm just talking about Israel, right? A lot of people were going to die. Now, we've established this earlier that the wages of sin is death. So a lot of people are going to die because they, don't, they refuse to keep the commandments of the Most High. They refuse the command. They refuse God's law. As a result, as a result, they have this mindset that they can do what they want. Romans 6, 23, we're going to bring it out again. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal through Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach, or Adawan. Right? So let's read it again. 2 Ezra 9 and 15. I have said before, and now do speak, and will speak it also hereafter, that there be many more of them which perish than of them which shall be saved. And what did Christ say in uh, Matthew 7 and 13, right? There'll be many, many people going to be dying. Then it's, then it's going to be more people to die because of their transgressions, because of their sins, than there will be saved. Matthew 7 and 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, that's death, and many there be which go in thereat, right? All right, this is my last one. My last one, all right? So we understand these things. All right, I want to get last one, 2 Peter 3 and 9, all right? 2 Peter, the book of 2 Peter, the third chapter, and the ninth verse. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All right, read that again. It's the second Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, right? So the Most High says the wages of sin is death, and you stay in sin, and you stay in the idea of folly, and you stay in Babylon, and you stay in the ways of America, you will die with America, right? The Most High's promises are not slack, right? As some men count slackness. So some men may forget. Some men may have this mindset, well, I forgot. Some men may respect judgment of, uh, or their judgment is predicated on the person and not the law that was broken, right? But the Most High is different. We are different, right? It says, but is long suffering to us word, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, right? The Most High doesn't want us to die in our sins, but we will die in our sins if you do not come back to the laws of God. But the day of the Most High will come, or Salakia, that's a, a that's the Adawan, right? But the day of the Adawan, or the Lord, will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. 
All right. So, yeah. So what that means is that I'm going to wrap it up here, right, through the spirit. But what does that mean? That means repent or die. That's it. You got you got you got two options. Repent and be converted and keep the commandments or die in your iniquity and your sin and in your lust. Right. And with that, I want to give all praise, glory and honor. To Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Like, share, subscribe to the video, subscribe to the YouTube page. Uh, hope this was edifying. Um, again, repent and die. And with that, man, I want to give all praise, glory, and honor. Call Allah, but now with Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. This is Brother, um, you know, Brother Ra'am coming at you um, live and direct and, and straight, no chase. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai.